All right, it uh, looks like we are live. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Revolution, as we say uh, every week. And um, welcome to uh, Frank Chapman, who is joining us this morning. Uh, Frank is a, a longtime uh, activist, uh, longtime communist, uh, longtime um, member of the fight for, for people's power, and one of the founders of the National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. Um, uh, and a, a call has gone out to refound uh, that organization, and a conference is being held November 22nd through 24th. And um, so the Communist Party USA is, is very proud to endorse uh, that call. Um, Frank, welcome. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the, the Alliance? Well, the, the Alliance is a, a mass defense organization that was founded in Chicago in 1973. That's 46 years ago. It was founded in the wake of the uh, great the great victory in the Angela Davis case. As you know, Angela Davis was also uh, falsely accused of murder uh, involving uh, uh, George Jackson's brother, Jonathan Jackson, in, uh, in San Rafael, California. And uh, as a result of that attempt to frame her up and and, and execute her really because at that time California had the death penalty. Uh, there was a tremendous response from the African American community uh, and, and, and the mass of the people in our country and, and the world. And uh, within a week after she was arrested, over 200 defense committees sprung up all over the United States, most of them in African American communities, you know, but not all. And uh, the uh, Communist Party under the leadership of uh, Henry Winston uh, and Charlene Mitchell. They organized what is known as the United Committee to Defend Angela Davis and all political prisoners. And uh, Angela challenged us with the formation of that committee by saying uh, it should be free Angela Davis and all political prisoners. And, and, and so that's how we put all in there. And, uh, you know, fast forward, we, uh, we, we won a victory. An all-white jury acquitted her of the uh, false charges that had been brought against her. It was the most tremendous victory in the history of this country in terms of uh, racist frame-ups. And also, it was the result of one of the most massive defense movements in the history of this country. Not only did we have 200 defense committees throughout the United States, we also had 62 defense committees. I mean, we also had defense committees in 62 different countries. And, yeah. they weren't, and they weren't all socialist bloc countries either. They yeah, and I, all, all through, I, I know in, in France and- uh, Yes, right, in France, and, France yeah. you know. I think we even had one in uh, 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 South Africa and Chile. I know we had one in Chile. You know? Wow. But it, this was, a, this was a, in the Republic of Vietnam, this was a, this was a vast movement. Uh, uh, like I say, this was one of the largest defense movements in the, uh, in, in the history of our country. And so that was a tremendous victory. And as a result of that victory, Angela Davis challenged us in Madison Square Garden where over 12,000 people came out to see her. She challenged us by saying, now I'm free, what about other political prisoners? And in response to that challenge, we formed here in Chicago in 1973, the National Alliance Against Racism and Political Repression. Excellent. Um, and uh, the I know that the, the work you've been involved in in, in Chicago um, more recently involves um, civilian uh, community control of police, um, which is part of the the platform of the the refoundation of the alliance, right? Yes, a little bit about in that campaign. Yes. Well, you know, the alliance also was founded in the wake of of, 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 of a great tragedy. And that is the murder of Fred Hampton and Mark Clark, leaders of the Black Panther Party here in Chicago. And the Black Panther Party at that time was giving leadership to a mass movement to get community control of the police. They were having rallies of, you know, three, four, five thousand people showing up at them. They formed the first Rainbow Coalition in this city to try to get that accomplished. You know, in fact, it was called the Rainbow Coalition. It involved uh, the Panthers that involved the uh, the Young Lords and also the uh, the, the, the Patriots, uh, which is a white which is a white group. 
-hmm. So, uh, you know, not only in honor of, 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 of Fred Hampton, but also in protest against this horrendous murder that had happened, led by uh, the Chicago Police Department. And we found out later on also there was some involvement from the COINTELPRO folks, you know, the FBI. Uh, we set up a task force on police crimes. And the objective of this task force was to uh, continue to carry on in the legacy of Fred Hampton and Mark Clark, the struggle for community control of the police, you know. And, uh, you know, the, the struggle has went through ups and downs over, over, over a period of 40 some odd years. But we, uh, we, we reinvigorated that struggle here in Chicago in 2012. And you've made some huge gains since then. There are now, uh, what, 17 of the city's aldermen who have said that they would. Um, right, there, 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 there were 17. Unfortunately, four of those 17 uh, kind of jumped ship. Oh. We presently have 13, but that was a historic advance. Yeah. And, 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 and we picked up, uh, you know, it's called CPAC, Civilian Police Accountability Council, which, which is a piece of legislation that will, uh, that will empower the, 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 the black and brown communities of this city, the communities of this city period, to hold the police, to hold the police accountable in this manner, where we will have the decisive voice in saying who polices our communities and how our communities are policed. So and this so, is a, this is a complete break with the the old model where um, police sort of investigate themselves and and uh, 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 to hold themselves accountable. A radical break with the, with the, with the old model. And this is a systemic change because what we are doing here is we are empowering the people. We're setting up a mechanism that will empower the people to uh, hold the police accountable for the crime that they commit. You know, we are uh, uh, setting up a mechanism that will, uh, that's, in, that's, that's, that's enforceable. In other words, uh, the inalienable democratic right of the people to hold the police accountable can be enforced by this mechanism, which we call CPAC. Absolutely, and um, and it's it's the result of a, a really enormous amount of work. Uh, when I was in Chicago, I did some some tabling. But I know you, you did tabling. There were um, uh, marches. Uh, there were actions like the Black Friday actions, um, mm -hmm. uh, presence at city council meetings. So this is really um, a huge, huge. Uh, the 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 achievement is. Um, you know, is the result of, of, of tremendous work. Um, and so how have you seen the, the kind of um, political terrain of the city shift um, over, the, over the course of your, your work around CPAC? Well, I think we ought to uh, take a look at uh, what, what happened. Uh, as a result of the uh, murder of Laquan McDonald, uh, African-American youth, 17 years old, who was shot uh, 16 times by a racist, crazed cop. As a result of that, uh, our movement picked up tremendous momentum, leading to, first of all, the firing of the superintendent of police, McCarthy. Uh, second of all, to the uh, 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 firing, well, we, she didn't get reelected, so that's the same as firing. Uh, State's attorney, uh, Anita Alvarez, and to Ron Emanuel, who was the mayor, taking his head out of the rain. Yeah, which was a huge, huge deal. Right. So these were these were sea changes. Yep. And 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 and, and it's these changes that made it possible for them to elect the uh, second uh, black mayor in the history of Chicago, the first woman black mayor. And, and also a member of the LGBTQ community. Uh, these, these victories would not have happened had it not been for our movement. And so these, these were the tremendous political uh, uh, changes that was made. Also, I want to point out that the uh, people who ran with CPAC in their plank for the city council, uh, we'd gone through their, through their participation in the electoral process, we'd gone to over 176,000 votes. Wow. So now, that uh, that made a big difference in our movement. That was a qualitative change because now we were not only counting people who supported our our movement through petitions and things like that, 
now we were counting votes, you know. And so uh, uh, this is a, a big change. But we continue to do the organizing that we've done for the last seven years. And that is organizing door by door, block by block, you know, community by community, you know. That's what we're doing. And uh, neighborhood by neighborhood. And, 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 and that's what's making the difference here. That's why we've been able to make uh, Chicago the epicenter of the struggle for community control of the police in our country. This is, this is linked to, um, or it, it seems to be going on in tandem with the, you know, the growing struggle of the Chicago's Chicago Teachers Union and Chicago communities for democratic control over schools and school funding as well. So the, Ab Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the Chicago Teachers Union has been a very ardent supporter of, uh, of CPAC. Uh, they uh, they passed a resolution years ago supporting us. You know when we were uh, when we were young and still kind of in the cradle, and they've been supporting us ever since. And we also support them. You know we will be in, we will be on their picket lines uh, when they when when they when they strike within the next week or so here. So that's been that's a very dynamic and 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 and, and fruitful relationship going on between our, our two movements between uh, Chicago Teachers Union. And Chicago Alliance Against Race and Political Repression. Excellent. And, and um, so as we approach the, the 2020 uh, national elections, um, vote, you know, voter suppression has been a huge uh, problem, racially motivated uh, and, and racist in sort of plan and effect voter suppression um, uh, has been a big problem in the past several election cycles. Um, is that something that the um, the National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression plans to uh, address, or yeah, we, we will we will address all all forms of repression going on in in our country that has a, 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 a political that's political and it has a racist cutting edge to it. We will, we will address, and of course that includes the Voting Rights Act that, that uh, uh, because they have uh, they've cut Section Four of the Voting Rights Act out. Which makes it almost impossible to enforce it, you know, and so this is uh, this this can't do anything but hurt uh, our movement, particularly the Black Liberation Movement. And so, yeah, we will we will uh, we will unite and work with people on that front as well. But our, our main our main focus in, in this moment, not our only focus, but our main focus in this moment is uh, stopping police crimes against our community because. What is going on right now, as, as we speak, is we are being uh, over patrolled and underprotected in black and brown communities throughout this country. And this is a big, big block to the development of any kind of democratic struggle in the United yeah. States. I mean, it, it's, a, it's really a, a basic democratic demand that communities should have control over the people who are allowed to walk around with guns in them, the people that, you know, represent the power of the state in them. Yes, it's a, it's a fundamental democratic demand that we are fighting for. Well, um, and, and uh, what, what do you think the next steps are after this uh, November conference for the, for the election? Well, I think the next step is, that, that, uh, well, what we hope to, to come out of the November conference is for the first time in a long time, the emergence of a national movement for community mm -hmm. control of the police. Uh, it's gonna be an important step in that direction because we're not just facing this problem in Chicago, we're facing this problem throughout the United States of North yeah. America. Everywhere where you have uh, African-Americans and Chicanos and Puerto Ricans, uh, Asians, you know, uh, in significant numbers. Uh, we have this problem because the police are there to repress us and to try to undermine and derail our movements. So we have to uh, uh, we have to have a national effort. And so hopefully, out of this national conference, we'll develop a nationally coordinated movement to bring police crimes to a halt and to have community control of the police. That's our, uh, our that's our main goal. And I, I noticed that um, in the the call for this uh, conference. Um, the the struggle for the the rights of immigrants and the the control of or the um, 
the pushback against the brutality of, of ICE and Customs and Border Patrol is is, um, is included in this this larger uh, uh, perspective of police crime. Um, so it seems Absolutely. like this is very much the moment when we need this national push. Absolutely, that uh, those, those are crimes committed by law enforcement as well, uh, and uh, you know the nation stands appalled as they see children being caged as they see people losing their lives, you know, because they are trying to uh, come into this country as a result of oppression and repression that we have created in their countries, or mm -hmm. that this government has created in their countries. So uh, 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 policing those borders, the way in which Trump has been doing it, uh, fusing together the uh, federal police, which is what ICE is, with local police, uh, all this here begins to set the stage the, uh, uh, the emergence uh, of a police state. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, where we can morph into a police state at any moment. I mean, you know, it's not like it's got to be a, a long drawn out process. To, so it's very important that we take up these struggles now. Yeah. Um, and uh, just uh, kind of as we wrap up, you know, the, the, the news lately is all about the, the push to impeach uh, Donald Trump and to investigate you know, the various crimes of, of, of his regime. Um, and it seems like there's a, there's a bigger story to be told around that. It has to do with the fact that, you know, accountability always flows downward. It's always the, the poor, the working class, uh, people of color um, who are, you know, told to fall in line, to be accountable to whatever. And then it's the, the powerful who are um, able to, to shield themselves, you know, whether it's um, you know, a police officer involved in a uh, crime against a civilian or a, a president involved in, um... you yeah, know, well, you know, since you brought this up, I want to salute uh, uh, Representative Al Green out of Texas, who uh, initiated an impeachment against Donald Trump, although it didn't, it didn't, it didn't take hold, based on his racism, based on uh, uh, you know, I mean, think of, the, think of the number of people that have been murdered uh, while he's been in power uh, and, 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 and how they're using his, uh, his, his racism, his open white supremacy to justify these, uh, 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 these, these violent acts. Uh, an unprecedented number, you know, and that ought to go into this impeachment process. Absolutely. You know, we're not talking about I spy here, you know. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, that's not that's not that's not that's not the whole story in terms of I'm for impeachment by whatever way we can get it impeached. But let's be clear, you know, that uh, very few people are talking about him being impeached for the for the racist policies that he's been instituting, including what he's doing right now on the border. You know, which, which that, would be the, the real the real democratic victory. Well, that would be the real and so the, since since there, since since the Democrats aren't bringing it up, we need to bring it up. Yeah. We, need, we, need, we need to talk about it. And, and this impeachment uh, attempt by, by Al Green, that was, that was two years ago, right? That was very, very early on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was very, very, because, you know, racism has been ever present. You know, mm -hmm. we're talking about 400 years of it. If we go back to 1619, uh, so uh, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not like uh, it just jumped yeah. up with Trump. Yep. He, he's the continuation of a, of a long and horrible history of, 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 of oppression of, of, of black people in this country. And not only black people, but also brown people. So yep. now uh, he, that, that, that needs to be included in this impeachment. You know, uh, he, 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 uh, he's committed crimes against our people that need to be uh, addressed. Absolutely. Well, um... Frank, thank you very much for joining but before, us. But before you go, don't forget to ask me the question about when is this conference and where oh. it's going to be. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry about that. So tell us about the conference. <laughs> okay. Well, the conference is what all we've been talking about here, and it's going to start on uh, November the twenty second in Chicago. We're going to be meeting at, at, at the Teachers Union Hall, uh, our opening rally, fifteen o one West uh, uh, Carroll Street. And Angela Davis will be our keynote speaker at the opening at the opening conference. She's one of the founding uh, members 
of, uh, of, the, of the National Alliance Against Racism and Political Structure. That's how we'll kick it off. And then the, the, the next day, Saturday and Sunday, we will have uh, uh, the conference will, will go into session. Wonderful. And well, people uh, can go online and, 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 and register by going to nwarpr.org. Please register. Go to nwarpr.org. Simple yeah. process. Yes, th this is a this is a, a major um, uh, something that has the potential to, to be a major major shift um, in the the movement for democratic rights, the movement against racism, uh, and the movement for for liberation for everyone. So, register um, and participate. And, and uh, once again, the, the CPUSA is very very proud to endorse the call for the conference. And uh, thanks again, Frank, for for joining us this morning. Thank you. Have a good day. You as well.